So, hi everyone from uh, Singapore side and also uh, good morning for the people from the UK side and also outside the lab. So, uh, welcome to the FCL Global Seminar Series and I'm Chin together with Thank You, we're organizing the Twitter to this lab global, um, uh, global Seminars Series. So, before I introduce our speaker today, I would like to mention a couple of house rules. So the seminar format today is for um, 30 minutes uh, presentation and 30 minutes um, discussion and Q&A session. So during the Q&A session, feel free to raise your hand or unmute yourself to ask questions for the people joining from Zoom. And also you can raise your hand and ask any questions uh, for the people um, uh, in person here. So notably, as Mike is mounted on the ceiling, please ask your question plug in here. Or we also have a mic here, which will pass around to my, um, for the questions. So audiences from Zurich can use Zoom chat to write questions there as well. We will try to catch all the questions, but please keep yourself muted for the presentation part. So today's topic is the circular economy potential model, moving towards a new paradigm for the urban harvesting of building materials. Our speaker is uh, Benjamin Sanchez. Uh, who is a postdoc researcher in the Circular Future Cities project in Future Cities at Global. So Ben, now the stage is yours. Thanks so much for the remarks. Hello everyone, uh, I am very happy to be here with you. Thank you so much for attending this, uh, this uh, final seminar uh, for me. And uh, but, yeah, I want to start a bit, uh, with the with the background of the, the problematic that we are trying to uh, I am trying to tackle with with my my card. That of course I mean I have to clarify that I, I belong to the circular the, the Singapore PG Center. I am part of the Circular Future Cities project, which is part of the Future Cities uh, Lab Global Program. And let's start. Um, I want to start with part of the background, and uh, we can say that in an era of climate, climate change mitigation and adaptation, the efficient use of the natural resources is considered as a practical means to increase sustainability in the urban settlements. Now, from a life cycle perspective, uh, buildings contribute significantly to the global environmental load caused by human activities. For example, the building industry in itself is responsible for the 30% of the world's um, uh, resource depletion, and at the same time, it is responsible for the 40% of the uh, production waste uh, to landfill. These numbers revealed, revealed a huge inefficiency in the uh, use of the resources, the natural resources, that are more scarce day by day. As such, in the, in the last three decades, there has been a growing interest uh, for improving the life cycle performance of buildings in order to move towards a more sustainable environment in the world. Now, to remedy this situation, the construction industry is implementing the sciences and systems with uh, improved life cycle performance. Uh, the main objective is to consider closed loop cycles. Uh, uh, the principle of a closed loop cycle aims to, be, uh, to keep products, components, and materials at their highest utility and value as much as possible in order to create these uh, sustainable cycles. One example of these uh, trends is the circular economy applied and implemented in the, in the construction industry. Now, in cities around the world, um, there is an urging to understand the, the circular flows uh, of the construction materials uh, to be, a, be able to take advantage of the enormous uh, uh, amount of resources that are already in the, in the existing built environment. Uh, it is necessary to understand better and in a systemic way uh, how the circular resource flows happens as a city, in a city level or at, at city level, but also how it is interconnected with buildings uh, in, a, in a more detailed way and the implications that this, this involves. Therefore, the vision of uh, the Circular Future Cities project adopts a systemic approach uh, to develop integrated frameworks and tools based on advanced digital technology for informing the design of circular and circular buildings. In this way, the CFC project has defined six different research teams. Each one of them proposes the use of specific digital technologies for the assessment of the built environment in a systemic way. 
Also, uh, the different things are associated according to uh, the three different approaches of so one systemic uh, circularity perspective that has the objective of mapping the material stocks in time and space. Two, the input output interface uh, a perspective that is focused on analyzing the material flows between and three, the information management perspective for construction materials in a circular. In this uh, framework, my research work is focused in theme number five of order, uh, that is implication to building design. In this module, we are uh, developing the circular economy potential model or CEP model for understanding how the building design and the configuration of, uh, of the building and the building components impacts the different the particular flows of construction materials. And even though the ideas of reducing construction and materials have been implemented in the past uh, uh, through other kind of strategies, such as urban mining or product recovery management, and these strategies are not sufficient for covering all the reduced flows for building components. These strategies are not sufficient um, uh, because they simplify the complexity of a building to the quantification of, of the construction materials by mass and input. This approach works well with some kind of uh, for some uh, kind of uh, ends and, uh, and purposes, such as recycling, for example. But it is not sufficient when we are uh, thinking in the reuse of buildings in different levels of the composition, um, such as the reuse of components, but also the reuse of modules that are integrated by, by different components, or reuse of systems, subsystems, or the reuse of entire buildings or sections of, of buildings. Of, of buildings. Therefore, in theme five, uh, theme five aims to explore uh, a transition from an urban mining perspective towards an urban harvesting perspective, um, representing a future where it is possible to plan ahead of time based on the understanding uh, of where and when which quantities of materials, components, or systems, or entire buildings are going to uh, enter or exit the circular economy in a micro scale, but also in a macro scale. In T5, we focus on uh, modeling material recovery yields and uh, building reuse rates uh, based on the configurational properties of, uh, of buildings. Our aim is to model the resource yields of buildings in order to understand how the, the design and how the configuration of the components and subsystems that are in, uh, integrated in a, buildings, in a building affects the recovery. For example, um, let's imagine that, that uh, a new building in the future uh, would need constructed materials such as structural steel. Uh, in simple future pieces, if, uh, these materials could uh, be retrieved easily from, uh, from the existing field environment, from the buildings that are approaching the, the end of life stage. Uh, uh, but now, the physical configuration of, uh, of our buildings, uh, that is the way they have been designed and also how the uh, different components have been put together impacts inevitably impacts how much of which materials components or even entire buildings will become available and when. In this context, building configuration refers to uh, the particular way in which building components, systems, or services uh, are interconnected as part of the same assemblage. Uh, for example, in these images uh, that you can see, uh, it is displayed how rooms are laid out in a, in a floor plan and how the building components and the connections are attached to each other as part of the same assemblage. In the figure in the left, uh, we can see a floor plan of a building and uh, also the, repre uh, the representation of the connectivity among uh, spaces. The links between nodes uh, could represent the physical constraints, such as uh, the type of wall, uh, maybe if it is a structural wall or a non-structural wall, uh, or they could represent other functional properties, such as the connectivity between uh, building space, for example, through uh, doors and windows. In the future, uh, we can see a, a disassembly model of, of a subset of parts of a building. 
Uh, the constraints uh, for the building components could be physical, such as uh, contact constraints or motion constraints, uh, or the constraints could be functional, such as uh, uh, structural system constraints, HVAC system constraints, or, or building envelope constraints. The building uh, configuration or assemblage it can be represented in multiple, in multiple ways for developing a specific kind of set. Uh, for example, uh, I will show you some, some examples of the, of the representations that we have found in the literature review. Um, they can be, or it can be represented using connectivity graphs, as you can see in these very simplified examples. Or it can be represented, represented using geometrical annotations, as you can see in that uh, floor plan. Uh, also, it can be represented in more abstract uh, ways, uh, such as uh, using uh, a matrices and arrays, for example. That this one in particular, uh, its name is uh, uh, structure uh, connection graphs. Uh, also, this is another example that its name is inter interference uh, matrices that represents always the configuration of some uh, of the objects that are part of the same assemblage. This is another uh, type of representation that its name is structural graphs that it uh, uh, represents the uh, structural interdependency among components in connection. This is another example that is assembly graphs that is similar to the, to, to the previous one, but all of them has uh, different functionalities, different purposes. Also, it can be represented as a parametric model, and that this strategy in particular uh, is very popular for uh, virtual modeling of buildings with different kind of commercial software. Also, it can be represented uh, using uh, some uh, this method that it's uh, it's called the uh, design structure matrices. That, as you can see, it's always it's very similar. The concept you have always all the components that uh, are that represent the, the assemblage. And then you can start to map so the, the interconnections and the interrelations that they that they have among others. But also, and there are other kind of representations like this like one. Like uh, the building configuration can be represented in a descriptive way with a list of statements that assemblage characteristics, such as assembly disassembly features uh, in the top. The geometrical properties uh, of the building and the type of connectivity between the building elements. Uh, also, uh, it is interesting to mention in this point that all the, the representations shown uh, um, have been implemented in buildings, and uh, they are part of the literature review that I have developed until this point. Uh, however, uh, for more, uh, with additional representations in theory, such as the ones that are the six one uh, that are uh, displayed here, but they are uh, uh, not many more, but they are more that I can be into such as constrained connect connection diagrams, obstruction diagrams, hierarchical trees, among among others. Now, the physical configuration of a building plays a, a critical factor on its circularity properties. And consequently, also the reuse flows are influenced as well. Um, in our approach, we will open the well known framework of layers of change by brand. And maybe you recognize this, uh, this diagram. Um, this space layering uh, framework acknowledges that uh, a building is a composition of elements that uh, are associated according to different uh, layers uh, or, or building functions that change at uh, different time rates according to, to their lifetimes. The six layers of change, uh, of change are displayed here, and they are uh, site, structure, scheme, service, space plan, and the stuff. According to uh, this approach, the configuration of the, uh, uh, of the building uh, in the respective layer must be planned according to their functional and technical lifespan in order to facilitate changes in the building, such as uh, adaptation, uh, disassembly, repairment, uh, uh, replacement, in our case, for reuse purposes and disassembly purposes. 
This means that uh, components in layers with a short life, uh, life uh, expectancy should be uh, easily accessible for this assembly. And on the, on the other hand, the components with a longer life expectancy may be less accessible and less easy to, to be disassembled. The field of, um, of uh, study of circular properties for buildings has been discussed in uh, extensively in the last uh, two decades. Um, some research and literature reviews have tried to homologate the terminology used in this domain. Most of the studies have developed theories about the circular properties in an uh, atmospheric way uh, by explaining the characteristics that the, the buildings must have to achieve a specific goals, such as this assembly capacity. Uh, flexibility, generality, uh, reversibility, transformability, and so on. There are uh, uh, many more uh, characteristics and properties that, that uh, other actors have, have, have been explored. Now, we have discovered, discovered that uh, very few studies have developed uh, uh, methodologies to quantify these properties, circular pro uh, properties, and uh, to quantify them in a mathematical way. Uh, in basic in their configuration. In order to better understand uh, the relationship between building configuration and reuse, and now we are developing this concept of that we're calling the circular economy potential model or CEP model. To estimate reuse and recovery yields by quantifying the configurational properties of buildings. The diagram on, on the right illustrates how um, the configurational properties of buildings play a critical role in determining the reuse flows uh, in the uh, the reuse flows in a circular economy. We we'll consider four reuse flows in the circular economy in construction. That is in its order in the top: reuse of buildings and structures, reuse of systems, reuse of components, and reuse of materials. And the waste is not part of the, uh, of the circular economy in this case. And the CEP model is a framework to integrate the existing configurational evaluation models. And uh, examples of, uh, are a method for, uh, that links the building, uh, building's adaptability to the permeability of its space plan, or a method that, that uh, determines the disassembly potential of structures based on the physical uh, interdependency. Uh, of the components. Uh, as part of our literature review, we have identified 22 existing evaluation models uh, and tools uh, and for, for buildings specifically. We have categorized and documented these models according to different criteria. Uh, in this criteria is the goal they aim to quantify, for example, adaptability, disassembly capacity, and so on. Um, also, the type of analytical model used, such as uh, uh, graph metrics and multi criteria method. Of course, the layers, layers of change that they target, that again it could be the scene, the same plan of the building, the structure of, of the building, and so on. Uh, the specific boundary conditions for reuse, for example, building and structure types, and the potential implementation in V, that V stands for building information model. Uh, we are uh, we knew uh, that the development of uh, such models is a pressing topic, uh, and our bibliometric analysis uh, support this. It, it also shows that the literature is uh, fragmented until now, um, which is why the CP model starts from a general framework to tie together these different uh, models and their roles. It is also worth noting that uh, we have developed two of these uh, evaluation methods that, that, that we are including as part of our uh, literature and part also of the CP model. The resulting general framework for the CP model categorizes available models and gaps. Uh, in this table, the tick marks mean that a particular model includes those categories in the assessment. For example, the SAGA model um, in the first column is a quantitative and universal approach for the assessment of the configuration of the space plan of buildings. The SAGA model measures the property of adaptability that affects the re reusability of the entire building. 
in this way, quantitative model, uh, models uh, emphasize uh, objective measurements of the building configuration for its mathematical analysis, such as uh, length, position, and interdependence. In comparison, semi quantitative models analyze building configuration based on, uh, on a set of uh, physical building features and uh, that are prioritized by importance. In regards to the applicability of the models, they can be universal or non-universal. Universal models, uh, as it, its name refers, uh, uh, are the ones that can be implemented to, for the assessment of any view. In other words, the evaluation of circular properties uh, can be done as long as uh, the information of the uh, building configuration is available. In contrast, non-universal models are oriented to assess a specific building typology. The BIM compliance uh, coding aims to map the models uh, that uh, have used the building information model as a platform for, to perform the configuration assessment. And these are four examples that we found in this, in this data tree. Now, from uh, the general CP framework, also it is possible to, to tailor for particular applications targeting a particular subsets of reuse goals. For example, uh, it will be implemented for uh, the evaluation of uh, the adaptive reuse potential for a particular type of, type of building, uh, let's say uh, public housing, by a particular uh, user group, such as uh, governmental agency for urban planning, for example. But this stage is uh, just an, uh, we haven't reached, uh, or we don't have, I don't have uh, 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 applied, for example, in this, in this domain. But back to the, the original idea, the, the general framework, the final output will be the BIM, a BIM based uh, application programming interface API, uh, where the user can set the CP uh, reuse goals for a particular building design. The application will suggest the uh, appropriate models uh, to use according to the uh, information available. Also, it will compute the models indicators uh, automatically, and it will assist in the detection of missing semantic information and the syntax mistakes. Currently, we are evaluating and prioritizing the evaluation models to be integrated in the, the platform. Uh, we are defining the information packages um, per evaluation model according to the IOC schema. Uh, that is the, the way how the, the information is stored in, in a information model. Um, and also, we are in an initial stage of prototyping the API. The software architecture that we are proposing for this API tool has three main levels. Uh, the level number one in the top is the execution of the CAP. Uh, the level uh, two in the center contains the sub-processes for the computation of the evaluation models that are part of the, that we are including in, in the CAP. And the level three in the, in the lower part contains the IFC information packages that are necessary for the evaluation models. In the highest level, uh, the required and the available information per evaluation model is gathered um, for a given uh, being project. In this level, the evaluation models are matched with the goals for the configuration accepted, that is adaptability, distributed capacity, and so on. Then the goals are linked to the corresponding construction material reuse flows. In the second level, uh, an IFC information delivery specification or IDS will be generated for each one of the assessment models. We have identified three main sub processes for um, the IDS generation. The first one is the pre processing stage. Um, where uh, all the IFC information is gathered and structured. Uh, in the analytical model stage, uh, the, the mathematical model uh, or method is uh, computed automatically and the outputs are stored in the IFC file. In the optimization stage, in the last one, uh, it could be possible to run similar simulations for the optimization of the results um, obtained in the previous series. 
In the third level, the information of the IEC entities is uh, verified according to the particular needs of each assessment model. Um, also, at this level, it's possible to semantically enrich the information model uh, or to create new extensions of the IEC schema if it is uh, necessary. Uh, as I mentioned in the beginning, uh, this uh, general structure is uh, in an early stages of development and uh, in order to test uh, the proposed technology. And, and some of the conclusions that we have until now uh, of the presented work are the next. Uh, the first one is that the evaluation uh, models to quantify properties of buildings configuration are critical for a system economy in, in, in buildings and also in the construction industry. Uh, because they provide the appropriate metrics uh, to determine the reuse flows of buildings in the different levels of the composition. Also, the uh, no, uh, also the, it was observed that, and documented that the field of assessment models for building configurations is still fragmented. Therefore, we propose the framework named the four uh, reuse flows in circular economy in construction that aligns the, asset, the assessment models with the layers of change and, uh, and uh, the circular properties of the areas. Finally, this study uh, provides an understandable guideline or guidelines for practitioners for the selection and implementation of the appropriate technology for, asset, uh, for the assessment of the circular economy building projects. Some of the deliverables of the research work are um, a conference paper that has been selected for a plenary talk in the International Symposium on Automation in Construction, uh, uh, Automation and Robotics in Construction, ISA 2023. A research article for the Automation in Construction Journal that is currently under a second round of uh, review. And uh, a literature review research article that is in its final stage for its final submission for the uh, cleaner production job. And at the end of my presentation, and I want to thank you so much for your attention and uh, thank you for listening. And I will be happy to answer any questions that you have in, uh, about the, the presented discussion. Thanks so much. Thank you, Benjamin. So now the floor is open to any questions or discussions. So uh, any questions from the FCR side in the value lab, you can use the mic. And any questions from the online uh, viewers, you can put your question into the chat box and we will ask. Yeah, I'm wondering if um... You know, since you mentioned this aspect of the accessibility in relation to the permanence or, or the, the frequency of maintenance of materials, um, I was wondering if, since you are also doing a network graph of the season of the layout, if um, a measure like, you know, some, something like a betweenness of connectivity uh, could be a lead to what species are most accessible and therefore how to configure uh, materials of the data to their maintenance. I see a potential connection that I do not have seen uh, explored with my intention. Uh, thank you so much for the question. And uh, my answer, uh, and several answer, it will be that yes, I think we are building up these ideas in this framework in a way that we just keep enriching it with more and more metrics and more properties, you know. Right now, the literature review that we have developed, we have to, we have been, you know, the the, the scope of the uh, different type of settings that uh, we have found already implemented and already uh, demonstrated in in, in 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 research, right? But of course, uh, we are aware that there are other kinds of segments that will be uh, developed that maybe maybe we haven't found. I haven't found. Uh, maybe I have to keep enriching more and more the literature review. Uh, but definitely, yeah, I mean, I think the more I have explored this uh, skill that is uh, uh, 
kind of new for me because I mean I I am coming more from the part of this assembly planning and uh, design for this assembly. Uh, and then I am starting to, to incorporate this other dimension, you know, and properties of function integration. So, yeah, uh, definitely it's something that uh, we are really like uh, uh, open. And also, it's part of the nature of this uh, uh, of, of the CP model. Uh, we, we think that this, uh, this model will be implemented and will, will integrate some, some tools. But at the same time, or, uh, or at any time, these tools could be upgraded, updated, and also it could be expanded by integrating more tools with other purposes. So yeah, that's uh, that's an excellent question. And, uh, and the challenge that, uh, that I found is, you know, to to, to find the, um, the, the, the the research that have, that proposes a solid mathematical model to measure that kind of characteristics and properties, you know. Because I have I have been uh, discovering a plenty of of uh, research that uh, uh, this this kind this kind of properties connectivity and, and so on in a very descriptive way just by giving a description uh, giving some examples some diagrams but no uh, not not by giving a methodology that I I can take and I take and I can just translate it into the field of information model right so that is one of my limitations on doing that. So the context mapping within the space syntax of the networks actually quantifies properties such as the connectivity of the space. That's I was thinking that maybe that would be uh, potential beginning. Yeah, so in, for that uh, example in particular, yeah, we have included uh, a couple of methods that is the Saga method, uh, the AOL OM method. And other ones that yeah that use that uh, that concepts and uh, those concepts and they have uh, proved them proven them you know uh, how they work for uh, for the, the assessment of, of a flow plan and yeah we have included that, that part uh, so far yeah. mm -hmm. um, so there are some questions from the Zoom chat. And maybe you can unmute yourself and ask a question. Um, the first question is from uh, Fong Yang. Yeah, well, I can repeat the questions from the phone chat. Yeah, so thanks for your interesting presentation. Could you explain more on how occupants activities in building affect the CD model? Hmm. Uh, thank you for the question. And um, at this point, we are not including that uh, uh, the, the behavior of the, uh, of the uh, user of the building uh, as part of the, of the assessment, you know? At uh, this point, we are just uh, uh, putting this in this way. This is not a design tool in itself. This is a, a tool for for giving a score or yeah, or for finding the uh, the appropriate information that you need uh, if you want to develop a, an assessing uh, configuration of 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 this. Of, of the assemblage in the in the, in the field, you know, that could be uh, again it could be related to to the different layers of change uh, in, in the space. It could be uh, the structure. It could be the angle of the and so on. But at this point, uh, I, I I can see the relationship that uh, the, the, the could have the integration of the occupancy of the buildings that that matters. But right now, is is something that we are not putting into the model, you know. Um, yeah, uh, right now, that, that, that is my, my final answer, you know, this question, yeah. Thank you. Um, so the second question, um, do you want to unmute yourself and ask a question? Uh, the question is from um, Javier. Yeah, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, Thank you so much uh, for for the presentation. Um, I was curious, 
you uh, you introduce much more. Uh, I mean, some topics regarding like the urban aspects of the of your approach. Uh, at the end, you were you were focusing much more on how to implement or how to integrate these um, these frameworks into existing BIM models. Are you as well trying to expand or to scale up these to C models to CT information models or to the urban scale as well? In the same fashion that you were showing in the last in the last papers. Thanks so much for your question, Javier. And uh, the answer is yes. Uh, but uh, right now we have I, I haven't reached that that level of development because right now we are trying to solve the, the, the this problem uh, at a micro scale, at a building scale, let's say. Uh, but then, after solving uh, this, this this level, of course, and as you are proposing, the idea is to jump to into a higher scale, you know, and uh, to go and trying to match it uh, uh, with something uh, uh, for for uh, for developing analysis in a in a scale of, of a city, for example. And also, is uh, per se is one of the objectives of the circular future cities program. And um, it's something that we are working uh, as a team, you know, not just me. Uh, I am in charge, let's say, uh, of the of the work package number five, that is more focused at the building level. But there are other work packages that is specifically the work package number one. That 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 one is is uh, dealing or uh, is targeting the assessment of the reuse flows of materials and components at the city level. And so uh, 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 we are developing these ideas like right now, uh, kind of separately, but as long as, uh, but in communication all the time. So the idea is that in one point, we're gonna be able to merge them and we're gonna be able to, yeah, uh, to, to match uh, the ideas that I am developing at the building level with the ideas that they are proposing at, uh, at the city level. So yeah, Javier. Also just as a reminder, I have been working in this research uh, just for one year. That is why I uh, I can I haven't been able to, to expand it like in something so much more complex as you are you are proposing. But that definitely is one of the main objectives of, of the of the of the of the, of the general project because it's circular future things. Thank you. Thank you so much, Benjamin. Uh, uh, open source uh, way, you know, or like uh, uh, forums. 
uh, in order to be able to keep expanding that the world of organic seed. Mm -hmm. So do you have any vendor which is trying to implement this? Mm -hmm. I don't know there are like some commercial partnerships that have been accumulated in the last years. Yeah. That uh, you know that uh, I mean that do not have like this entire like conceptualization, but that they target you know for this is of uh, a kind of like how to how to not sustain you to retrieve some parts of the building or how to perform the life cycle assessment of a building but at a component level. So there are different things that have been appearing because of the importance, you know, this problem, the importance that a plenty of resources are are just uh, wasted in the, the, the construction industry because we don't have we don't have the active tools for doing the, the evaluation of the of the buildings into into the tree the the that has the value that, that has value. So yeah, definitely the, the, there's a trend. There's a trend. In my opinion, uh, it's not enough. I mean, it could be better. Uh, but also that is something with that because that means that it's something it is a top that is uh, that must be uh, developed uh, in the near future. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I, I have a question. Okay, so um, thank you for your presentation. So uh, one question I have is that um, uh, actually it was a problem with a voice. I think. Um, can the Zoom site hear us now? Yeah, I think. Um, okay. yeah, 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 I'll pass the microphone to you okay. because some of the audience can't hear clearly, I think. Oh. Yeah, yeah, so I just want to check because I have a, um, uh, architectural background as well. So I'm just wondering if you feel it's necessary or if it is, uh, how can actually just, uh, like, um, how can architects be aware of this whole, um, idea of circular um, economy and because it's highly related to the end life of a particular building that the architect's design. Do you think it's necessary for the designers to actually know about this and then be aware of this during their initial design process? Thank you so much for your question. Yeah, I, I can see that uh, now that we sit under the constraints, uh, the new constraints that we have in the climate change. Right, that we have the yes, in this country. And uh, you know, the interesting thing is that this is very important, you know, you know, the scientists are not proposing the But it's even more necessary to explain the low design of the strategies and methodologies in assessment for real things that are existing and uh, for the extreme environment that unfortunately they, they were designed by 200, 100 years ago, and they are not mentally adaptable or disassembled, they will be used, repairable. And so that is not the challenge, you know, because uh, the needs of new construction are uh, increasing year by year, they pay by the day. And, um, and yeah, and if we should focus in the new design, uh, we're not gonna, uh, we're gonna, in general, the construction industry is not gonna be. It's enough, you know, uh, you know, the, the, the um, certain leaders of construction that I want to be in for the foundation. Yeah, so again, that's a good question. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so I have a question for you. Um, so I have a And I don't think there's more questions um, from the Zoom site as well. So um if there are further questions i think ben will be happy to share more so you can contact him through um uh, email or slack from the uh, fcl side yeah so thank you ben for the presentation and thank you all for participating in the global seminar have a nice evening and have a nice afternoon